Yo, I just kept for your real nigga shit. Let's see him say it. Let's see him say it. Alright. Alright, sign me for a second. We're about to move here. Fuck that. since the 2015-16 school year. Built in 1962, opened in September 1963. You know, 57 long years. And this is the final year. And I am the last principal of Bandale. At Bandale, we look around and we think, okay, what are some of the things that have had the greatest impact and you know we cannot talk about impact without talking about basketball at Bandel, you know we've seen a lot of it early in the morning after school late in the night six to eight on wednesdays and you know you know i must give credit to mr harrison for spearheading the basketball influence at Bandel. you see Working with kids outside of normal school activity, we see the students in different light. And we act, interact with them in different ways, and it, it helps to build relationships. Relationships need time to build. And Peter Harrison spends a lot of time with students. He spends time early from 7.30 to 9 with students. He spends time 6 to 8. Friday evenings, he spends time with them when they call upon him outside of school hours. So spending time with students led to strong relationships, led to influence, it led to engagement. You know, many students, even after they graduate, they still came back because of the relationships that were, were built and the um, habit that was developed around basketball. My name is Trevor Shirk. I uh, went to Bendale back in the uh, 2000s. It didn't have a great reputation. Everybody, everybody thought it was a problem school, and they thought they thought the people who got sent there were were people who had problems. But that just what that just isn't the case. I was I was uh, I was in grade eight, going making my decision. I could have gone to Wexford. I chose Bendale because I didn't want to sit in a class of 30 kids with uh, with my pencil tapping on the desk, annoying everybody, trying to get energy out. Uh, here I was able to do, I was able to learn hands-on. Coming here changed a lot of people's perceptions, mine included. It changed my mother's perception. She, she didn't like the idea that I was coming here, it, you know, like I said, it had a bad reputation, but it changed my behavior. Uh, by, by the first half of grade nine, uh, she changed her tune. She, she realized that it was giving me what I needed, and it's given a lot of kids what they needed. Morning, all right. Let's go! My name is Michael Kissy, and I'm the head basketball coach at Bendale BTI. We first uh, started out uh, this year. We, you know, we weren't sure whether the school was closing down or not, and um, you know, I had this idea of how do we, you know, really make this year special. I, re I remember when 
you know, I first announced to the team that, you know, we were going to head out to Collingwood. A lot of them kind of, you know, gave me this blank stare and had no idea, um, you know, where that was. Um, I think we spent about an hour talking about where Collingwood was and, um, you know, whether, um, you know, there are any black people up there and, uh, you know, the fear of, you know, not knowing uh, what they're going to encounter or, you know, uh, you know, the distance that they were away from home. It definitely, it definitely spoke, it definitely spoke volumes, you know, um, you know, there's so much more to our, you know, to this world, um, but just, there's just so much more to the city and a lot of these young people, um, you know, were limited in their exposure of it. So um, I was excited, really excited for them. Um, I really wanted them to, um, you know, have a good time. Winning the tournament, you know, wasn't, wasn't high on the, um, on the priority list, you know, I think I really wanted these guys to um, be exposed to a different community. Um, I wanted them to uh, connect with other student athletes from um, from the province. Um, I, w I wanted them to really uh, experience something different. I wanted them to to know that there was more to um, what they know, which was. Um, you know Scarborough and, and the neighborhood. Um, there's more to that, and there and there's so much out there beyond. Um, you know their walls of comfort. So my name is Dennis. Um, I've been here for four years. Uh, the school has been really, really good. I learned a lot. There's a lot of great teachers. Like they'll be helping you a lot, and they're just like a parent to you and. They're always with you, helping you. I, my first round of basketball, I think it would be grade 11, 12. Um, at the time, I did not start, like, no ball team. I just played ball. I wasn't, I wasn't kind of scared, worried, or all, like, worried, scared. But when I came to Bendale, I realized there was a team. And my first time here, I did not join, because I felt like this is more be competitive, and, like, it's just, like, I wasn't ready, or, you know, like, that. And I got told by a teacher, you know, don't let, like, nothing go you down. If you want to play, you play. Play for yourself. Um, I'm a firm believer in providing broad-based education. And that's what Bendil does. It provides programming for students that you can't get at a collegiate. You just cannot get it because it's just two different systems. Um, and the staff at Bendil, I mean, I've had now connections with Bendil now for over 20 years. And I still keep in touch with some of the staff people there, Peter Harrison in particular. Um, and watching kids grow up and come back and contribute to Bendale, like Sheldon Benoit, like he's younger than me. And watching him come back and doing what he does or doing what he did with those kids at Bendale, it shows you that, that uh, that's a special building. Not everyone could work in that building. Not everyone deserves to work in that building because those kids there, they're... They're not needy. They're looking for someone special to help guide them. And that's what Bendil did. My name is Brandon. I'm a graduate of uh, two, class of 2017. Bendil isn't really, like, fucked up. Like, it's not really messed up. It's just like, I guess over the years, people thought that Bendil was bad. Some people who don't even attend Bendil come here and say, you know, this is full of retards, drug dealers, and it's just bad people. People are stupid. Growing up here, like going, yeah, I would say growing up, you know, I I didn't see that. I seen it was like kind, you know, it was kind hearted. People were giving and stuff. You actually had fun. That's what I think of Bendo, you know? Yeah. Like we had to learn how to work as a team, which was fun. Uh, over the years too, like we learned how to be a family as one, and like overall, like we always had each other's backs, which was good about basketball. Other than like anything else in the school, that's like one thing I learned about basketball too. It's like it's not always about sports and like you know having a big ego. It was always about family, and family was the main thing here at Bendel. Like it was, it was good. Bendel isn't like, oh, like, some people spread rumors about how people get yoked up. 
uh, and all that about the school is dangerous and all that. It's not really what you think. We really think about it, the people in this school is chill. Like how, these, like how the principals say, we're family, you know? We're gonna ride out for each other. I worked at Bendale for approximately, from approximately 2004 um, up until 2013, 14. Growing up, um, I didn't really have a, a, a good opinion about Bendale. It was um, almost, it was common knowledge that you were sent there if you weren't uh, the smartest kid or if you had some other behavior problem. When I started working in education, I started working at the Highbrook Learning Center um, at this program called the Safety Program, which was a suspension program for uh, high school students. Highbrook Learning Center is right behind Bendale. I remember having to walk through the parking lot at Bendale to get to Highbrook, and I would actually feel that I'd have to bow up, you know, and and you know, and kind of make sure that I was on my P's and Q's, and that was a serious thing. It was a, known as a very tough school. And then I ended up at Bendale in 2004, and instantly I was quite shocked um, that the opinion that I had of the school, um, the students, wasn't really what it was. And I basically then fell in love and stayed at the school all the way, um, even after I, um, I became a teacher. I immediately resonated with those kids because once I would look at their credit counseling summaries, I'd look at their address, they were all common names. Um, whether it be Cataraki, whether it be um, Gordon Ridge or some of these neighborhoods, you know that the kids were not coming from the best situations. The gentleman by the name of Peter Harrison, who was always involved with um, with basketball, he was a guidance. He's a guidance counselor at Bendale, but his probably biggest impact was these Wednesday night runs. The Wednesday night runs would be consist. It would consist of. Um, you know, former Bendale coaches and teachers, former Bendale uh, students and current students. And the competition was amazing. The basketball was amazing. It gave kids in that area an outlet um, to, to, you know, obviously get exercise and get off the street. But probably the most important thing is a lot of times you would have these counseling sessions with students, present day students, on what they need to do to be successful in school. Really fostered an environment for students to, to uh, grow not only on um, athletically um, in the various sports that we had, but also academically as well. So Wednesday night basketball at Bendale, uh, it's something that has to be close to 20 years old now. It has to be. Um, I remember the first night of that, that program. It was myself, uh, Peter Harrison, um, the community police officer, and another teacher. Those were the only four people that showed up. And we just played, I think we ended up just playing two and two. And I remember the teacher never came back because he was sore for weeks. Um, the police officer, he came back a couple of times. He was, he was actually a decent player. Um, but I remember Peter saying he wanted to start something where the adults and the kids could interact and through basketball. So it wasn't just about playing, it was about how we interact and how we engage the kids um, in the middle of playing, after playing, before playing. So the kids could see themselves in us. So it was very important for Peter to, uh, once we opened it up to, um, to the community, well, some, certain members of the community, uh, it was very important that they understood that, that they knew that they were coming out not just to play, but that they're going to help mentor these kids. Okay, so the Wednesday night thing. Mm -hmm. I have never done this. This is like enlightened self-interest. I do this because I love it. It's so much fun to come to the gym, mm -hmm. see these guys. There have been, you know, some difficult moments maybe <laughs> on a Wednesday night when guys are getting into it 
with, with each other too much, they can't stop. So we just like, but I closed the gym. What what, what did it mean for you guys if I shut no, the gym I, down for a couple of weeks? I want to see that guy here again. That was upsetting. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got my phone, got my charger, got my keys to the gym. It's all good to go. Like, everyone can say, like, yeah, he's like a father figure. And, like, yeah, 100%. Like, man. And, like, what he meant to everyone, like, he was just a person because he's a guidance counselor. So, like, he was, like, the best person to, like, go talk to. Like, you're having a bad day in class. Yeah. Like, you're, you know, you're just there and you don't want to hear talk, to talk no more. You're like, all right, later, teacher. I'm, I'm, I'm going, going to Harrison. Harrison. I'm going to Harrison. Harrison. Harrison, if it wasn't for, for Wednesday ball, oh, oh man, man. Yeah, I'd be no. outside every day. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have, I, 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 you, you helped me you, by promoting my, my, my machining. Right now, I'm a fourth year uh, um, apprenticeship in Tulin awesome, awesome. You know what I mean? Um, really work. I, that's why I always try to come back and, and, and you know what I mean, so you can show me off a little bit. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I, went, I came here, yes, I was here. So I met um, Peter Harrison. Hmm. I believe I met him um, when I was working in the safety program. And he might have, I think the reason how we met was he was bringing one of the students there uh, who maybe got into trouble to do a few weeks at our program. Mm-hmm. Instantly, once I once I met Peter, um, the first thing that came out is that his of his, his love for basketball and sports in general. Once I started working there, Peter became a very important mentor in my life, mentoring me um, yeah. as we were both working in the guidance office, him providing me information about what my future was going to be, um, becoming a teacher. But mainly we, we, we bonded over athletics and sports. And, you know, my background um, being in the CFL and playing football. He does a lot yeah. more than just being a guidance counselor. Or like a co- like, like an assistant coach. Like he, 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 he's there as family. Like, like he yeah. treats, yeah. like if you're on the ball team, not even just on the ball team. Like if, if you're a person who just wants to try, he, you're family to him. Like that's, yeah. that's pretty much it. Even though it's not in his job description to help out with legal problems outside of school with kids getting running into the law and everything and the fact that him he, him coming out of nowhere and, and stepping up to help help um, us get all back on the right track is like it means a lot because like that's my freedom and he just like he just took he helped me with that he helped us with that actually because without harrison there would be no wednesday ball wednesday was a good way of keeping us out of trouble as a young age especially especially a lot of us you know so <clears throat> Thank you. And without Mr. Williams, there would be no ball team, right? Like, a lot of us were very undisciplined and hard of hearing, hard of hearing, (laughs) unnecessary. And he's the reason why some of us graduated also, you know? He's the reason why some of us kept their grades up because if we, if athlete, student athlete first, right? So if we weren't getting our grades up, like we weren't going to classes, we weren't passing it. Passing our classes, there's no ball for us. You know? I think like the main thing about Harrison too was like he always gave you like the confidence like not to give up. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. he always pushed you, you know, you're not like a failure. You can't you can't do this because of like, you know, your nationality or because like you came off the streets or something. He he saw everyone as equal. Yeah, honestly. Which I think we can all about agree. that. He always like gave you the confidence to you know you guys can do better. Even after high school, you guys are can still yeah. have potential to do whatever you need to do, right? He never gave up on you, which is the good thing about Harrison, which is like, as Justin said, he's like that father figure, you know? Yeah. Uh, I just want to say, I have never seen the ball bounce off the rim more than that second game. In the first game, we were kind of tight, but the second game, you guys were taking really good shots, and the rim was just spitting the ball back at there's nothing you can do about that. The energy you played with, the effort, the skill, the guys on the bench all into it, man, this feels like a breath of fresh air have being with you guys here today. Let's just clear our heads, eat some pizza, and then next game we're going to give it. Does that sound good? Yeah, so good. Trouble, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what is this? 
I got I, man. I, I got I, I, I man. I, I, I heard you in town. Yeah. I heard you in town, man. Jeez. Okay. What's going on, really? Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. That's you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, I want to see your brother, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See him, uh, oh, Lee Roy Williams. Oh, snap. Good to see you, man. See, if it wasn't because of this, this, this place, like I wouldn't have found the love for food that I, I have now. Like I always loved eating food, but mm -hmm. creating that, and now that I'm actually in the field for, dang, it's been like I think 15 years. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so getting into that and just yeah, moving on up. Oh man, it's 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 been it's been amazing. I just learned all that I've learned from here, and then grew from it. Went to George Brown, grew from that, and where George I am now, Brown. it all just. Yeah. Yeah. I spent the majority of time at school, yeah. right? I could say everybody that I knew was my family. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't go to all classes, and I wasn't on time to all classes. Because if it wasn't for Ben Neal and Mr. Ron Zimmer, I wouldn't know. Tool in that. I wouldn't know nothing about machining I, or and Mr. Gage mm. and Mr. Gage because actually it was Mr. Gage first design mm. and tech, right? But if it wasn't for those guys, I wouldn't have be. I wouldn't have known the change. When I like my, when my parents told me that I was going to Bendel, I'm like fuck. I'm, like, Yo, I'm, <laughs> done. I'm done. See, I'm not like I'm not like hard like you guys. Definitely, like I, I didn't know nobody from Bendel. Like you guys all had like connections and everything, and I was just going there and they were, like by myself. And I was just like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna fucking die. <laughs> so like my mentality when I first came was just like, you know, just try and join a bunch of sports teams because I was athletic. Not now, obviously. <laughs> uh, just to, just to try and really get myself out there and um, meet people that I definitely normally wouldn't hang out with, and uh, I, I feel like that definitely worked. People have this image that trade schools, for some reason, are a place where troubled students. Mm -hmm. Students that are slow, students that can't keep their grades up, just a whole bunch of foolishness that that isn't supported anywhere. It's just <clears throat> word of mouth. So it's just like that was always disappointing. But that was my grade nine year. We didn't we didn't have like a set team, right? So like, I, I was a starter, right? But I love basketball. But I, I really didn't care about school. You know, I was just doing me. Uh, like, I, I was playing ball, but without a meeting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my grade ten year. Uh, it was like a fresh team. We had a, we actually had a season. Uh, we had a different coach, and I was I was benched like I, I was I was benched yeah. the whole season. Didn't didn't step on for one minute. Like I I went every practice. Didn't miss. I was always at school, right? But I was still I was still doing like you know smoking, drinking, you know partying. The, the key thing for these guys and for the students at the school in general is resilience. They, some it's so easy to give up. You know, give up, quit. I'm gonna walk out. I'm not coming back to this gym. I'm not coming back to this class. Whatever. These guys are resilient. They keep coming back. My grade 11 year. That's when Michael coach, right? And he gave me the start. Like he, he gave me the motivation. Like yo, you can play. Let's play. I'm like yeah, man. Like you know, like when once he told me that, I'm like, I'm like all right, fuck it. I'm I'm, I'm gonna stop doing all this, all the drugs, alcohol. You know, I'm I'm gonna focus. And like, it, you know, it got my attention, right? Because like, no, no coach gave me that chance to like, you know, there's more than basketball. Yeah, I feel, you, I feel you. Like my grade nine or nine and 10, yeah, I didn't think I was going to graduate at all. I thought I was going to drop out, just go. <laughs> and I, 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 like for me, I was fine with it. I'm like, because that's all my friends do. You know, they drop out, they drug deal, you know, they, they, they gang bang, they do some stuff. Yeah, you're like, and I was like, fun. and I, I was, I was a part of it, right? But then like. When, when Michael came, like, he showed me, like, yo, just ball, but you got to think, there's school, man. Like, there's so much more out there, right? And he gave me that chance, and I'm like, that, I instantly snapped. Like, I went from, like, like doing stuff to, to get money, right? And, I remember, I remember, I remember. And I, I, was, I was there, like, yeah. like, everyone saw me as, like, just a kid that played basketball, right? Yeah. And I, I wasn't known for anything else. When, one of the things that Michael and I experienced was that we took our teams, of course, you guys are long gone then, but so, the, our teams... When we played, Michael always had, you know what, you always shake hands with the ref, shake hands with the other team, you play hard at the end, you shake hands again, and you don't talk. Like, you just simply, and you know what, we always got compliments from other co coaches, like, how hard we played, how well we conducted ourselves. I have to give some real thanks to, to Harrison and, and Mr. Williams. Thanks. For one, they came to see me when back, my back was against the wall, you know what I mean? Without, without, without basketball... <laughs> 
I don't think I would have stayed in school to be honest. I, to be honest, you know. Yeah. Here, uh, they were like fathers to me. Like I said, if it wasn't for them pushing me in school, nice. uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be here right now. The fact that uh, Bendale's closing. Um, it's just to me an end of an era of Scarborough public education. The individuals that work in that building, the people, the staff there, they know the students that they're working with and they give 110% of themselves. So for that part of the city as well, those students, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to be missing something. Vendio is a different feel, uh, provides a different kind of education. Um, and it's just a different level of service to those kids. So it's, it is certainly the end of an era. Uh, yeah, it's sad that Brendel's closing because there's like a lot of memories put into the school from like grade nine to sports to, you know, finding your first love and stuff. Learning the life mistakes from um, the school. I'm very, I'm very uh, upset that the school is gonna go, but I mean, I feel it's time for some change. I mean, the school's been here for quite a few years. It is, it is. I think you know, it is also time for it to go. It's, it's just, it's just a sad thing, really, because it's like a, having an old dog. You, you know, it's like it's just time for it to go. Like that's pretty much it. It's sad because like I've been here for a while and it's a really good school it's sad that they're shutting down but like it's I, I don't I just don't know what to say but this school is still gonna be in here that's oh, always, yeah. Always, always, always. So, yeah it is this kind of commitment and passion that makes a difference to students you know I want to give props to Mr. Pevich and Ms. Mazzaferro three years of working together and you know we did that you know conflict freeway which is not easy in a high-paced environment such as Bendale. I also want to give a shout out to the teachers at Bendale. At um, every school you work at their challenges and their successes. At every school that you work at their people that you work great with and the people that you work not so great with so we've achieved a lot here so I want to give a shout out to the students of Bandale. I learned so much from our students you know you sometimes think you know a lot but when you work with students you always learn something I've learned a lot about anxiety. I, re I remember this one student who did not show up for the literacy test in the morning. I called her parents and um, she just didn't want to get up and come. And you know, I be and it it was related to anxiety. And I I was beginning to understand how anxiety can affect students. Um, I've learned a lot too about behavior and how students it's not a learned behavior and sometimes it's things that cannot be controlled but there has been negative perceptions of Bendale and it's because of a number of reasons you know elementary teachers have told me that in their schools when students misbehave you know statements such as you better behave yourself or you're going to end up at Bendale so the perception of Bandale as a negative place has been reinforced in elementary schools. It has been enforced in the media. And um, most people have had that perception, right? Um, well, I'm hoping that in the last few years it has changed. You know, many administrators have come here and worked hard at it. And... Um, I'm sure that uh, there has been a lot of success. You know, me, when I arrived there, for example, there were no academic or university courses. But in the last, in the 2015-16 school year, we started academic and university courses. Also, uh, you know, more students have applied for college this year than in the last few years. So there's an uptrend in students who are achieving highly. And in the 
2017, 16-17 school year, we established a school council, a student council, and they've performed above and beyond. You know, serious acts of violence that make the media can happen in any school, but you know, I'm pleased with the way the students here have, you know, established a sense of community and have reported things early and have worked together to ensure that there are no serious incidents in the school that can, you know, promote the bad name that Bendel has had for a number of years. Well, there, there are so many positives to what's about to happen next September. I did not. I came to the school and I was like, I was, when I was in grade nine, and I did not know what I wanted to do with my life. And then I found, I went to Pullman and I found Kramer. For four years, I went, I, I did Pullman straight. And this year, I'm done high school and I'm going to college for Pullman. To be honest with you, I want to be able to change this world. I want people to understand what I have to say, and I want to change this world for the better. So, 